back uh, this week talking Michigan, Colorado. I'm Michael Spath here with Steve Morrison, and we're, we're rebranding the show already, calling it Football 101 from instead of from the film room. But uh, Steve wanted to point out this play really early in the game, Jabril Peppers making his first of three and a half tackles for loss in this game. Yeah, Peppers is a special, special player, and he made some big plays in this game, but this one uh, certainly started it out the right way. He's going to be in, in man coverage starting outside, and his man's going to motion inside, and uh, he's going to come inside with him. His guy's going to go inside the block, and he's got good eye control on his, pl- on his uh, receiver. Gideon is quick to attack the pitch, uh, forcing the block from uh, uh, Jabril's man, and he immediately turns his eyes to the back and, and without hesitation goes in and, and executes a, uh, just a, a fantastic tackle and a big sparking play and a tackle for loss. And, and uh, the kid's really special. And uh, those are the reasons why. Just great eye control and great instincts. We might see another player or two from him this, this session. I think we've got a few. Well, Steve, we said that we're going to see more peppers. And here we are, the very next play that we're going to review at about 11.45 to go in the first quarter. And they, they, put, they, they run a, a sweep, essentially, with him where they get the, the right guard and the left guard out to block. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna come out in an empty formation and uh, do a jet sweep to uh, Peppers and get him out on the perimeter. And the, and the big idea is uh, Colorado's tough on the inside with their interior players. Let's get the ball on the outside. And uh, nice job inside by Cole and Braden reaching the second levels, getting the, the, the nose guard in the center or in the uh, linebacker cutoff. And then guys blocking downfield. Uh, you've got uh, Darbo blocking downfield. You've got uh, uh, Chase on. Chasson. Chasson. Uh, blocking the, at the point of attack, and it's just it's opening up some space, and, and again, getting the game out to the perimeter uh, where we're a little bit better suited. Steve, uh, eight thirty to go in the first quarter, and probably at least for the first half, the biggest play of the game. Michigan gets a key punt block. Yeah, and and you say for the you know for the first half, I think this is something that carries over as the rest of the game goes to uh, you know from a punt return standpoint. We got another forced another bad kick, and then and really what we're doing here is, is schematically. Uh, Nicely drawn up, where we're gonna we're gonna send four guys uh, to attack their three little shield blockers, and and uh, you know they all do a nice job of staying tight, and and Joe eventually comes through um, the middle and, and takes the punt really off the head, but he's in great position to do that. And and the other nice part of that is had that punt not even been blocked, those guys there would have been no roughing. You can tell they're working on this, but the fact that they in that position at this point in the game get a, a critical block. And then have the, the uh, wherewithal to keep batting around. And, and Perry, you mentioned it, Perry's around the 38-yard line when that ball uh, is blocked uh, to come back and scoop it up and score. is just a huge, huge play for Michigan at this point. Steve, uh, 14-20 to go in the second uh, second quarter. Michigan's losing 21-7, and they come up with a very big play defensively because of some nice work by the by the corner, the, the defensive backs, and then Ben Gideon. Yeah, first things first, they're going to uh, get us in a situation. We're in a man concept here, and they're going to motion uh, their guy across the ball and then back again, essentially into a bunch formation, and that's really a tough thing to do when you're, when you're in a man coverage. But uh, Hill and Stribling do a great job of communicating that and end up covering those guys as they release, and uh, quarterback's got to hold the ball. Then inside what you have is you have Peppers coming off the edge, uh, setting the edge, and Gideon's man, the linebacker, uh, is going to take the running back. He's going to block Peppers. Shoulders are going to turn to the sideline, and then that tells Gideon he can add himself into the rush, and then ultimately he's going to go through and, and get the big-time sack here at a really critical point where we need some negative yardage. Steve, the very next play, and here's our third Jabril Peppers play, another tackle for loss uh, where he's lining up opposite this guy and just closes the distance between uh, himself and the receiver so quickly. He, again, just talking about how special he is, this is a, another critical key play. It's a, it's a third down. We're backed up. We're down 14 points. His man uh, is going gonna, is gonna to step and then come off for a screen, and without hesitation, he is, he's a missile, and he's going, and there's no breakdown in his game. He's going to sprint right to the, to the receiver and make an unbelievable play, and, and the guy's got an angle on him to block him. It doesn't matter. He's, he's a firecracker. He gets out there and uh, makes another huge play and, put, and puts them into a bad situation. Steve, we're at 8.55 of the second quarter, and Michigan uh, claws a little bit closer here with a, a J.U. Chesson jet sweep, fly sweep uh, touchdown, and really the, the play is made by Cleet Hill and the fact that he's already created an intimidation factor. There's no doubt. These guys have watched two games now, and they, they've seen what Hill can do with and without the football, and uh, I think it's, it's almost comical um, you know, when, when he gets out in the perimeter, 
this corner wants nothing to do with them, and, it, and it's essentially a, a, a walk-in for Chesson at the end. But uh, kudos to Hill for everything that he's doing, and, and you could you could put four or five plays on this tape that we're doing today on the, on the great effort that he gets blocking and with the ball. And you said this is a turndown? Yeah, this, this guy wants nothing to do with it. He sees big Khalil uh, running out and, and absolutely just turns it down. And, uh, you know, he'll be, he'll be corrected on Monday in the film room, but, uh, but for now it's a big win for Michigan. All right, Steve, 8.04 to go in the second quarter, and the Colorado quarterback takes a couple of licks, and this is maybe the first one, a hit by Wormley, that starts the downward process for him. But this is really a play that you point out is made by Matt Godin. Yeah, it is. And they'd run this play or a similar version of this play earlier in the game and got some big yardage off it. They're going to fake a uh, wide receiver screen and, and try to get a delayed slant up the middle. But uh, all eyes are going to be on Warmly here getting sacked, but really set up by a, a wonderful, wonderful job by Godin. Uh, he's going to play over the nose. He's going to quick swim to the right, and he's going to get vertical push uh, and end up eventually running into the running back at about eight yards depth. And when you couple that with the 6'6 frame, there's nowhere for the quarterback to see, and he's just a live target there for Wormley to come in and, and really do a nice job of cleaning him up. Steve, this was we talked about an important play earlier, the punt block. This was equally important, taking the lead going to the half, uh, the, about 45 seconds to go, the Darbaugh screen, and as you point out, Grant Perry really makes this play. Yeah, and this, like you said, it's a, it's a critical point in the game to, to, to retake the momentum and get the lead back. But Perry's going to set this up with, uh, they're in man coverage, um, both those receivers are in proximity. We get press coverage out of both of them. And rather than just running out right now and blocking uh, the guy on Darbo, he's going to set it up by taking two strong steps upfield and then out, which really, in essence, takes two uh, guys out of the equation. And then he pops right back up. He's going to go block, get another block, and then uh, uh, Darbo does a great job of making guys miss, get guys downfield on blocks, and then Perry, I'll give him a, a half credit for another block there, just... Uh, unbelievable effort by the kid to, to, to help sp- uh, spring this for, for, uh, uh, touchdown. Steve, uh, here we are early in the third quarter, about 13 and a half minutes to go, and Michigan answers uh, Colorado's long touchdown pass with a long touchdown run, and your favorite blocking fullback, Khalid Hill, out in front again. He, he is something else. Uh, another great job. They're going to, again, work the perimeter and have some success, but he gets out in front, and, and really he's going to get two guys. And the nice thing about this one uh, he understands the concept of the play and that the tailback's right behind him, and he gets uh, hands on the first guy, knocks him down. But what a lot of guys will do there is stay locked on in that uh, in that situation. He continues on to the second level, and and really will will give him credit for a block, even though the guy essentially tackles him um, because he wants again nobody wants anything to do with Big Hill. So. Uh, Great job by him. Buck gets a block downfield late as well, but a uh, great job by Michigan to get the momentum back. Steve, 12.50 to go in the third quarter, and Michigan picks up a sack that ultimately the sack that knocks the quarterback out of the game, and you just really are not maybe in awe, but really appreciative of what uh, Ryan Glasgow does on this play. It is, it's, a, it's a textbook push-pull pass rush move, and, and what we're talking about there, he's going to uh, attack his player, and, and try to drive him back. And once that player essentially is going to start to regain his momentum, he's going to use that momentum and pull him towards and, and go around the outside. It's, it's a textbook job by him. Uh, and like you said, it's a nice job of getting to the quarterback and eventually getting him out of the game. And then, uh, you know, the second part of that is McCray is just going to add into this blitz after his man blocks. And just good defense on a third and long situation. Steve, uh, 9.20 to go in the third quarter. Uh, Jabril Peppers, uh, unblocked sack, but... As you point out before the before he the snap takes place, it's really a play that uh, Chris Wormley maybe makes just because of the fear factor. Yeah, so they're going to come out. They're in an empty formation. The center's got to set the protection, uh, tell the guys up front which way they're going to slide that protection into. And essentially, in an in a empty set, you're going to have three blockers to one side, two to the other. They wait for Michigan to get lined up. They're going to see where Wormley lines up. And because he's been so disruptive this game and, and really all the games he's played in, they're going to slide that protection to him. Uh, that's all well and good, except when you have number five lined up on the opposite side of that, and uh, he's unaccounted for. Does a great job disguising and comes through clean on the quarterback for another big sack and another uh, big productive point for him. We keep on talking about key plays in the game, and there are so many of them. And here's another one uh, about five minutes ago in the third quarter, and a really nice job by Wilton Spate to, to feel the pressure, get outside the pocket, hit Grant Perry, and then uh, Grant Perry makes, uh, makes this play happen for himself too. 
Yeah, it's a third and fourteen. We we just we're, we just got sacked. We're we're looking at some long distance here, and and they get a little bit of pressure. Uh, Spate's able to avoid that pressure, step outside, really do a nice job of keeping his shoulders square, even though he's got a, a second level defender in his face, and finds Perry in the open window, and then Perry just uh, turns the wheels on and gets downfield, and really, in my opinion, does a nice job of ball security at the end because I'm not sure he sees this uh, tackler coming in. I think he was smelling six and. Uh, securely tuck the ball away, but a big play and uh, definitely a game changer. Steve, our final play, and it's probably pretty appropriate that we're finishing with the Jabril Peppers, the punt return touchdown that seals the game for Michigan. And, uh, you know, you want to talk about two things. One, how the punt block earlier in the game sets us up, and also the the uh, gunner that, that stays out of the block in the back. Yeah, first thing, you know, we, we were able to block a punt earlier in the game. Uh, I think what you see here is in their initial protection, those guys are going to stay in there a hair longer. And really what happens is it just puts guys on different level as they go down to cover uh, the punt. Our two, our two uh, gunner, our, uh, corners do a great job on their gunners, getting an open window there for Jabril to run through. And then it's all him. He's just being Jabril, and uh, he's, he's special. He's going to take it to the house and, and make guys miss and uh, put the icing on the cake from this comeback victory. So another... Uh, great job by Peppers from, from start to finish here. 